All right, so we're in chapter six now, and uh, chapter six is all about these uh, things called inner product spaces. Um, <clears throat> an inner product is uh, a really, really useful tool that you can use in uh, in a vector space um, if if one exists. Um, and essentially, what it does is it generalizes the dot product in R n. Um, so to, before we get into inner product, it's worth reviewing some of the useful properties that the dot product gives us. Um, three in particular, and we're going to spend 6.1 and 6.2 uh, looking at, amongst other things, um, how the generalization of the dot product to this thing called an inner product gives us meaning for these different quantities in, uh, in a general vector space. So just a quick review. The dot product, even though I could give the I could give the definition, you know, um, the component-wise multiplication of two vectors, and then summing those results, that's that's how we define the dot product. But one of the most useful properties of the dot product is it gives us a concept of magnitude. So uh, we talked about magnitudes of vectors, the length of a vector, back in chapter three. And then we showed, once we defined the dot product, that you can find the magnitude of a vector by taking the square root of the dot product of a vector with itself. So you can think of the uh, magnitude of a vector as being defined in terms of this dot product idea. Um, and then once we have a concept of this magnitude, which we're going to call uh, a norm, that's the term we're going to use, that um, naturally gives us a meaning behind this idea of distance. So <clears throat> in chapter 3, we also showed that the distance between two vectors can be thought of as the magnitude or the norm of their difference. U minus V, the magnitude, would give us the distance. Finally, uh, we saw that with those two concepts, the dot product and then the norm that we defined from the dot product, we can come up with uh, a way of determining the angle between two vectors. And that's that's what we're given here. Cosine of theta is equal to the dot product of u with v over the product of their magnitudes. <clears throat> if we can generalize this idea of the dot product to more general vector spaces and then define quantities like the norm and the distance and the angle between two vectors relative to that new thing that we're calling an inner product, what this does is it extends the ideas of a magnitude of, of vectors, distance between vectors, angle between vectors, to vector spaces that look nothing like Rn. So this essentially means that we can talk about, for example, if we're in a vector space consisting of you know, three by three matrices. We could talk about the distance between two matrices. Or um, if we uh, are in the, the vector space of continuous functions, what is an angle between two continuous functions? What does that mean in the context of uh, the inner product that defines that? And that's actually surprisingly useful. It may seem like we wouldn't need ideas like that in these general vector spaces, but if you think about, for example, distance, this distance idea is what uh, our epsilon delta definition for a limit is based on in calculus. Um, so if we can define a limit of uh, you know a, a function as as its variable approaches some constant using uh, this distance idea, then maybe we can do something similar for vector spaces. Is it does it make sense to talk about limits when instead of dealing with you know, functions, we're dealing with matrices or, or some other kind of vector, you know. Um, this opens the door to those sorts of those sorts of ideas in general vector spaces. But <clears throat> that's enough um, preview. Let's kind of, let's go ahead and get into the definition of an inner product. So right here, uh, this is from our book. We have the definition of an inner product. It says an inner product space, or sorry, an inner product on a real vector space V is a function that associates a real number. Now, the the symbol that we're going to use here is angle brackets. Um, and this didn't print very well, so it looks almost like parentheses. But those are angle brackets. And this is the reason why 
we're not using angle brackets to represent vectors in Rn. In Calculus 3, if you've been through Calc 3, uh, it's typical to represent vectors with that angle bracket notation. But in, in linear algebra, especially in this section, we, we reserve that notation to mean something entirely different. So to avoid the confusion, we're only using angle brackets here. But if you have this, this angle bracket notation, we call this the inner product of u with v. Um, any, f any such function uh, that's, defined, or that's defined this way and satisfies the f these four properties is called an inner product. So these are the four properties. First of all, symmetry. Um, if I take the inner product of u with v, it's the same as the inner product of uh, with v with u. Um, additivity. If I take the inner product of u plus v with the vector w, I can split this into a sum of two inner products, u with w, v with w. Homogeneity, these are terms that we keep seeing over and over again. Um, if I have a scalar times u, and I'm taking the inner product of that vector with v, I can pull the scalar out. Notice the scalar is only being multiplied to the first component here, not the second. It's just, it's just that one scalar that's being pulled out. And then finally, uh, what we call the positivity axiom. We, anytime we take a, an inner product of a vector with itself, the result is always non-negative. And what's more, the only time uh, the inner product of a vector with itself is ever equal to zero is if v is the zero vector. In all other cases, if you take the inner product of v with itself and it's not the zero vector, then you get some positive number out of this. So any such function that, define, uh, that satisfies all four of these properties is what we call an inner product. Now your dot product in Rn, in R2 or R3 or R anything really, um, satisfies all of these and we proved that back in chapter three. We proved all of these axioms. And you may remember using these names as well, symmetry, additivity, homogeneity, positivity, we used all of those, or we showed that all of those hold true when this inner product is u dot v. But there's a number of other inner products that exist that have a, that are very, very useful. Um, before we get into some theorems and some examples of inner products, we want to also do what we had mentioned before, generalize the concept of uh, norm or magnitude of a vector and distance between vectors to the world of inner products. We're gonna hold off on talking about angles between vectors until 6.2. Um, <clears throat> so mimicking the, uh, the property of the dot product up here, if we wanted to find the norm or length or magnitude, if you prefer, of a general vector from some vector space, some inner product space, um, and when, sorry, when I use the term inner product space, what I mean is a vector space that is equipped with an inner product. Um, the inner product of v, sorry, the uh, norm of a vector v is defined to be the square root of the inner product of v with itself. Now this will always be defined because of this positivity axiom up here. If you take the inner product of any vector with itself, the result is always a non-negative scalar. And it's important to emphasize this, it's part of the definition, but I wanna emphasize that if you take the inner product of two vectors in a vector space, the result is a scalar, not another vector, just like with the dot product. And so here we're taking the square root of a scalar, and this is going to give us a concept of, of size or length of a vector. And then similarly, we define the distance between two vectors in this general vector space as the uh, norm of the difference between those two vectors. And again, that would be the same thing as the square root of u minus v uh, and u minus v, the inner product of u minus v within u minus v. And then just like in the case of uh, Rn, uh, a vector where the norm is equal to one is called a unit vector. So we borrow that terminology here, <clears throat> okay? Um, down here we have kind of the first important theorem uh, concerning inner products. So if u and v are vectors in a real inner product space, and again, that's a vector space v on which we've defined some inner product. And then if k is a scalar, we have these four properties. Uh, notice the norm of v is 
non-negative. And when it says with equality, that means the norm of V will equal zero if and only if V is the zero vector. Um, all of these properties are, are similar to properties that we have in the case of Rn with the dot product. Um, if I have a scalar times a vector and I'm taking the norm of that, then the, the absolute value of the scalar can be brought out, same as the dot product case. Um, the distance between u and v is the same as the distance between v and u. That's intuitively what we, what we would expect. But again, we've defined some brand new thing. We need to make sure that our intuition is consistent with our definitions up there. And then finally, the distance between two vectors is greater than or equal to zero with equality if and only if u is equal to v. Again, that's intuitive. The only time you would want the distance between two vectors to be zero is if you're talking about the same vector in both cases. So uh, the proofs of these are really, really similar to the same exact proofs that we, we dealt with in chapter three in the dot product. So I'm only gonna look at the proof of one of these, A. And I wanna comment on this because we haven't really done this much. Uh, A is phrased as an if and only if statement. And when we've proven if and only if statements in the past, we've done two directions. Prove the if-then statement going one direction, and then the if-then statement going the other direction. But in some cases, you want to be careful with, with this. You, you can't do it as often as you might think you can, but in some cases, you can bypass that by doing um, uh, a, a proof like this. So first of all, the first part of this statement is, is true just from the definition. Um, the fact that the norm of V is non-negative, is greater than or equal to zero, it follows immediately from the definition of a norm, and that's because we define the norm to be the square root of a non-negative number. So of course it's going to be non-negative. The, the more important part of that proof is really, or of that statement, is the uh, equality part. The, abs the, the norm of V is equal to zero if and only if V is equal to zero. So what I'm going to do is um, read this off, and this, this basically is just from using definitions, which is why we can do this if and only if type of proof. So here I'm saying that the norm of V is equal to zero if and only if the square root of the inner product of V with itself is equal to zero. Now the reason I'm able to use if and only if here is because this is the definition of this. So if and only ifs are often used in the case where, um, where the only step in the proof is applying a definition to something. Um, now, this is true if and only if the inner product of v with itself is equal to zero. This is a product of square roots. We know this to be true. And then finally, uh, the, app, the inner product of v with itself is equal to zero if and only if v is equal to zero because we have an axiom for inner products that states exactly that. Notice it even uses the if and only if there. So I don't need to do this in two different directions. I can be a little bit more efficient in doing it this way. All right. Um, <clears throat> So those are properties that mostly concern norms and distances, but they follow from the, the axioms or the definition of a, an inner product. I'm going to start looking at some examples of inner products now. Um, and uh, we're getting towards the end of this video, so we'll probably introduce this one and then do the example in the next video. But um, the first couple of inner, product, uh, inner products that we're going to define here are on the vector space Rn. So we already have the dot product as an inner product on Rn, but there are other uh, inner products that are kind of like versions of the dot product that are defined a little bit differently, but also happen to be inner products and they can serve different purposes. So the first one I wanna talk about is the weighted Euclidean inner product. Sometimes the dot product is called the Euclidean inner product. So the, the, the unique thing about this one is this weighted part. So let's suppose that we have two vectors in Rn uh, and I, I wrote them in component form here. And then because we're in Rn, I'm also gonna select n scalars. I'm gonna call them W1, W2, all the way through Wn. And these are just real numbers, they're not vectors, okay? We define the, uh, the weighted Euclidean inner product this way. Um, it's, it's what you see here. Notice this looks really similar to how we would define the dot product of u dot v. The difference is that in each of these terms, in addition to multiplying you know, corresponding components together, u1 with v1, u2 with v2, and so on, I multiply the, uh, the 
um, this product by each of those corresponding weights that we defined over here. And that's what we call these scalars, we call them weights. This has some applications in, for example, computing weighted averages. Your book, I believe, does an example where it, it talks about that. Um, but in the next video, we're going to talk about a specific weighted Euclidean inner product. In fact, we'll even read, uh, I'll even read what the example is here and then we'll work through it at the beginning of the next video. What we want to do is show that the weighted Euclidean product, uh, Euclidean inner product on R2, so we're talking about vectors in two space, where the weights are w, uh, w1 equals 2 and W2 equals 5. So these are two specific scalars here. Um, the goal here is to prove that this is an inner product. And that's going to boil down to verifying those four axioms that we use to define inner products. But that, that's going to be the next video.